So today we're going to look at um, the second law of thermodynamics and how the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve kind of helps to um, visualize and explain it. So just recall when we define entropy, we kind of we basically mean the the amount of disorder. So how much disorder there is, or the number of possible states. Uh, the second law then says that total entropy will tend to spontaneously increase. That means um, processes will naturally move to a state of more disorder, increasing entropy. So let's see this in action here. Recall your Maxwell-Boltzmann curve is basically just a plot of velocities versus, um, well, number of particles. All right, so if you find a collection of atoms, for example, uh, let's say you have um, uh, a temperature of, say, 100 degrees Kelvin, you're going to get a range of velocities. They're not all going to be the same velocity. You're going to get this kind of a range of velocities here. And um, so let's just label this as 100 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and say we have another substance at, say, 300 degrees. So let's say this one's going to be 300. So the curve for this would look maybe something like this, assuming that you have the same amount of particles. The areas of these two should be the same. So let's say this is 300 degrees. Well, hopefully you can notice, like if we just look at these individually, the entropy for a cold substance is going to be more ordered or lower than the entropy for a high substance. Remember, we're talking about the number of possible velocities here. And so there's fewer possible velocities for 100 degrees than there would be for 300. So this is going to be have a low entropy. And the symbol we use for entropy is S. So it's going to be a low S, low entropy. And this would be a high entropy relative to each other. So this would be a higher entropy. And again, because there's more possible velocities here. Right? So in general, you could maybe make a, a quick generalized sta statement that low temperatures is going to be have low entropy. Okay, or it's going to be have high order. More ordered, fewer states. All right, so what happens when we put these two in contact with each other? Okay, so the last video did a good job kind of explaining microscopically what's happening. So if we have our cold substance here and we have our hot substance here, right, 100 degrees and 300. So you're going to get a bunch of collisions that happen with your particles and eventually you're going to reach this state of equilibrium. And this would reach, if these are everything's the same here, this would reach, say, a 200 degree state. Okay, and hopefully you can see. Well, this these are this is highly more disordered. Uh, sorry, more ordered here with these two different states than this. This is going to be a more disordered state, right? Uh, think of like separating your clothes. If this is your whites and your darks, this would be just kind of all of them mixed up together, right? So, um, so anyways, let's look at them just kind of individually though. What's happening? So if we drew this one, this kind of medium temperature. It might look something like this. This might be our 200 degree state of equilibrium that we reached. So I do want you to notice that the the um, the high temperature actually became more ordered. So in this case, entropy actually decreased for the um, for the red for the high temperature. However, the entropy increased for the blue for the cold temperature. So the thing I want you to notice is the total entropy for the whole system is going to be increasing. So in other words, this even though this is going to be increasing entropy and this is going to be decreasing entropy, the whole system combined is actually going to move towards a state of increasing entropy. So that's why you can sometimes have individual things actually decrease in entropy, become more ordered. But as a whole, especially if you think of the universe as a whole, it's always going to move towards that state of increasing entropy. Let me just say this another way. 
what you will not see with this is you will not see this turn into say 50 degrees and this turn into say oops 50 degrees and this turn into say 350 notice that this does not violate conservation of energy we could lose 50 joules of energy and GIS could gain 50 joules of energy however if we look at our curves here this would become something like this 50 would become a very highly ordered state okay and this yellow would be a highly disordered state Okay. But taken together, you can see that this is a very ordered state when you look at this orange and this yellow combined. Right, The separation here is very dramatic between the two. All right, hope that clears things up a little bit.